Hey guys, how's it going? Thank you for joining us on our Degrassi Google Plus Hangout. Um, so as you can see, I am hanging out here mm -hmm. with Lyle and Olivia. Hey guys. Hey. Uh, what characters do you play again? Because I forget. No, I don't forget. But I play Maya one. Matlin. And I play Tristan Milligan. And I play nobody. But I used to play somebody. Yes. Very back in the day, before the internet, this is why this is my first Google Plus Hangout. Um, but I used to play Marco, but I'm really caught up with the show, I think. And if you guys, if I say something wrong, please school me at any point in time, and I will accept it fully. Um, all right, so we're going to just start chatting. We're going to spend an hour. You guys can ask any of your grassy questions, um, and, of course, any questions to Lyle and Olivia. Uh, so make sure if you guys want to join in on the discussion, post your questions in the comment section of this video and tweet us, and uh, we're going to get through as many as we can. But before we start, we are also joined with a group of awesome Degrassi fans. So hey guys, you guys want to introduce yourselves? Why don't we start with? <laughs> don't all jump in. Why don't we start with Ryan? Ryan, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us where you're from? I'm Ryan. This is Natalie. I'm Natalie. And we're from upstate New York. Awesome. And who is your favorite Degrassi character of all time? I'm going for it, okay? Oh, I'm going for it. Uh, you go first. I don't know. <laughs> um, probably Marco, obviously. That's why I asked uh, it. We didn't plan this. Yes, we did. No, point we did. one for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, mine would be Maya, then. In that case. On, why? Oh, okay, so I'm the only one. Interesting. Oh, wait, you're coming so up. Hard. You're coming up. Um, okay, next, let's... Sorry, I'm trying to work this thing. Uh-oh, something is frozen. What? Nope, it hasn't. I'm Robin. Uh -huh. Hey, Robin. Hi, I'm Robin. I'm from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. I'm 20 years old, and I've been watching Degrassi for quite a while now. Um, I would say Campbell Saunders is my favorite, and I'll try not to go on about Kamaya, but oh my goodness. <laughs> Kamaya. Oh, my Campbell. Wow. That was good. So you schooled me. I was like, who's Kamaya? <laughs> um, yeah, Campbell's awesome. And thank you for being our Canadian rep on this. Yeah. All right, so let's go over Mary. Hey, Mary. Hi, I'm Mary. I'm 17. I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. And I would say that my favorite character right now is probably either Maya or Jack. All right. <laughs> Jack is really cool. Jack, Jack has got great style, too. I, I'm into Jack's hair. Yeah. Yes, I, I love Jack's hair, the whole, like, crown braid. Yeah. It's too short for it, but... And I think, Someday. like, her and Imogen make, like, a really cool couple. Because they both have, like, this wacky but really cool chin style. Mm -hmm. I can go on. Okay. But I won't. <laughs> so two points for me. Two yeah. points. Oh, no. Why isn't this giving me... Oh, make so she's on. muted. Oh, yes. Oh, I have to muted. unmute. Janice. Oh. Can you hear us? Uh, we can't hear you. Um, I'm still, yeah. I'm, oh, she's still muted. Oh, I'm sorry. This is our fault. Sorry. One sec. No. Tech I guy. <laughs> I think I unmuted it. I think she might. I, th I think she has to be on her. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Hey, Janice. Hey, Janice. Hey, Janice. Hey, Janice. I'm from Louisiana, and I'm from Patterson, Louisiana, and my favorite character is... Oh, I'm torn. I'm stuck between Eli and Claire, but like they're one in my mind. So Eclair, I guess. I, 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 those two belong together forever. Claire, I guess. Claire's my favorite character. Claire, what would be? What would be their? Like what's the? What's the? E Claire. E Claire. That's e -Claire a, that's a is one. Eli and Claire because they're meant to be together forever. No, they're always on. I never know yeah, when they're yeah. all on. Who knows? Who knows? One day they will be as equal. Okay, okay, so, okay, so we have... We have we have guys, I've never done a Google Plus Hangout, so my tech skills are very subpar. Bow queen. It's Christine. Hey, Christine. I'm 15, and I'm from Howell, Michigan. My favorite characters from like the older Degrassi are Spike and Emma, and right now I love Maya. Three points from me. Oh, I won! So you got <laughs> All right, we're 
right, well, there's still, you know, going to be fans tweeting at us, so maybe they'll call to us, saying how much they love us. <clears throat> um, what's your favorite character? How about that? Like, of all time? Yeah. Um, I really liked Manny, because, like, the first time I watched the show, it was, like, her storyline, and, like, yeah. So I think her, she'll always have a special spot in my I thought we were going to help each other out here. You're in the market. You already have a point. I don't even know. Wait, you don't have anything. Um, in the earlier Degrassi years, I really liked um the Gr- Nina Dobrev's character. Yeah. Like Mia. Mia. I yeah, Mia. I liked Was her. It? Yes. I think more just because I liked Nina Dobrev. Yeah, yeah. But then I liked the Anka, too. She's one of my favorite. Okay. So cool. So cool. So cool. Like, you don't mess around with the Anka. No, like, she has such a good attitude and, like... Yeah. And we love Alicia in real life. Yeah, yeah. I love yeah. Alicia. I've never met Alicia. She's really she's cool. She's really she's cool. We best. love her. She's, a, she's my rock star. There's this <laughs> image that I have with Bianca that I can't get out of my head when she, like, goes and grabs a gun. And just, like, yeah. Her, and she's like, about to make some big choice, and she's going to, like, wow. She gets all the dark stuff, which I love. her. Um, my favorite of... Uh, I mean, it's just too hard, but I have to say that I would think... I would have to pick Ellie. I thought Ellie was really cool. Oh, yeah. yeah I, I liked Ellie, Ellie, too. It was just, like, also the best. She had the best fashion. The ginger. Yeah, she just never, like, she was so relaxed and, like, I don't know, really cool. Yeah. That was how I, I do like, remember her. envisioned myself, how I would look as a teenage girl in my dream. But last was not Well, now we know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh, Ren, did somebody just join us? Uh, hi, I just joined. Oh, hey, how's it going? Ren, late. Hi. <laughs> so, Ren, why don't you introduce yourself, tell us where you're from, and your favorite Degrassi character. Can you repeat that? Can you hear us? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, just introduce yourself, tell us uh, where you're from, and uh, tell us your favorite Degrassi character. Okay, um, I'm Ren. I'm in uh, Norfolk, Virginia. And I've been watching Degrassi <laughs> for since the night. And my favorite character right now is Tristan. <gasps> yeah! You're the first one to say Tristan. Thank nice. you. Ren, you showed you. up just in time. <laughs> Thanks, Ren. <laughs> I'm fashionably late, too, so it's all good. Awesome. <laughs> um, all right, guys, so why don't we just open up the floor to you guys. Uh, shoot any questions at Lyle and Olivia and about the show, and go. All together. All at one. <laughs> Whoever wants to jump in. Ryan's gonna how about we, okay, Ryan, how about we start with you? Okay. So, how do you think that the LGBT storylines have affected, like, the community, like, the LGBT community? Well, I think that it, like, um, brought awareness, first of all, like, just to even talk about it, I think, is something really important. And um, I know, like, Marco was one of the first gay characters that I, like, saw on TV, too, so I... Yeah, I think just talking about it, too, it brought up a lot of issues just between that. Yeah, I think the show does a great job at showing you that there's other people like you out there, which is important if you're from a, you know, a place or a family, small town, that you're like, I mean, I don't know. You don't know any gay people, and um, so it's getting that conversation going. But I think it's really cool about you guys, that you guys have access to actually communicate with other LGBT people online and to be able to keep that dialogue going. Um, so, I mean, that's really cool. For me, back in my day, there really was no kind of social media, so it was, you felt even more on an island, so that's why I think, you know, keeping the show starts the discussion, it's great now you can keep having it, so. Okay, awesome, thanks. We're just trying to save the gays. <laughs> One gay at a time. Um, okay, so how about we go to Robin? Okay, my question can be for any of you guys. Um, if you could give your character a super um, power, what would it be and why? Um, I don't know what my character's superpower would be. Yeah, it's like, hard. I know That's what I want question, as a superpower. Though. I want to be able to like be really small so I could look at things like from a different perspective. Like, I'd want to go into, like, a flower garden and get really tiny, and then it'd be, like, a jungle. I guess for Tristan, I'd make it that he could read minds. Like, not for me, I would in real life, but for Tristan, because he seems to really not know too much what people are thinking. Yeah. I don't know. It would, life would be easier if he had a voice mind. Yeah. I believe that. For Tristan, <clears throat> for sure. Yeah. For all of us. 
I would hate it. I have to read mine. <laughs> that would be scary. So we have uh, Krista here, who is our, our our tech person and saving the day. Well, I'm trying to do So how about we go to Mary? All right, so this question is for Lyle and Olivia, um, and it relates to the Champagne Supernova webisodes. And um, my question is, do you think that Maya and Tristan and um, Tristan and Miles are ever going to be able to have the same sort of relationships with one another that they were able to have before because Tristan's behavior has been really childish, and um, especially towards Miles in the webisode. And um, I was wondering what your thoughts were on that and where you kind of see them going from here. Yeah, um, if I remember correctly, then I'm, like, doing the yoga and... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know if it was childish. I think that it's, like, you know, if somebody has their heart broken, they're going to be kind of upset with a person and they're not just going to get over it right away. Um... So, I mean, maybe there's a better way to deal with it. But then again, he is a teenager, and at the time, he's in grade 10, right? So, um, but I think, as for them, it'll never be the exact same, I don't think, ever. I don't think it can be the exact no. same after you go through something like that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Maybe they could get to a point where they can be accepting of the situation, but I don't think it'll ever be like yeah. how it but was. But with the feelings the they've all gone through yeah. and felt for each other, I don't think they could ever have the relationship they did when they started. No. Oh. Awesome. How about we go to Janice? Um, my question is, how do you think Campbell doing what he did affects Maya now? Mm -hmm. Tough one. I feel like Maya's still, I mean, not in denial, but I feel like a lot of the time she's very just silent about it and deals with it in her own way, whether that be, like, anxious to other people. Like, I feel like the way Maya is now, because of him, she worries about all the other people in her life, especially the guys in her life. She's always just wanting to make sure everyone's okay, because I'm sure she feels like someone, it was her fault and she could have done more. So I think that's how it affects her. She's always very, very anxious for everyone else. And I saw it too with Miles, right? In part one. Yeah. Of 14, where Maya's like terrified for Miles, even like in an irrational way. Yeah. Which I think, oh, our artwork has fallen. <laughs> that face. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> Come on, Bill, fix it for us. Mama. There's the real view. <laughs> okay, so let's go to Christine. Okay. I was wondering, what do you think is the strangest, like, role you got recorded to do? Say it again, love? Like, what's the strangest role you got recorded to do? Um, for anything, or, like, strangest? Yeah, like, um... It says, yeah. actor, what's the strangest role you... For me, it's probably something I'm not sure if I'm allowed to, like, say that, but it's, like, kind of a supernatural thing, and I had to be, like, feeling something that was, like, coming out of me, and it was, like, a lot of, like, special effects and stuff, and so that was the strangest thing for me, because it was very, like, I'm feeling something that I'm not actually feeling, and it's, like, it doesn't actually happen, so I couldn't relate it to anything, so that's the strangest thing I've ever had to deal with. Um, for me, I guess it's just, I haven't done too many live action stuff, um, but... I did, like, a little kid show called Super Y, and I played, like, a little Japanese boy. And when I auditioned for it, I didn't even know I was Japanese. And, like, they didn't have me, like, act Japanese, like, you know, or have anything. It was just, like, my voice, but, like, I was a Japanese boy. So, like, that, that was kind of, like, offbeat. And, <laughs> like, it was cool. So, I guess that. <laughs> awesome. Oh, wait, did we go to, did we ask Ren? Um, Okay. Uh, I have a question for Lyle. Um, what do you imagine Tristan's parents to be like, since we've never uh, seen them? Or That's really really interesting. Um, I mean, to be honest, I didn't think too much about his parents up until <clears throat> the storyline with Mr. Yates when he was, like, texting and they were 
you know, it assumes that his parents were constantly fighting over, like, who to take him to a dentist appointment and stuff. So I feel like Tristan's somebody who's very, like, he has his own life, and, like, you know, that's why he gets really involved in school and stuff, maybe why we haven't seen his parents. I think he's a lot different from his parents, and maybe they don't understand him as much. Like, not against him, but, like, I just don't think they get him as much, and he kind of has his own thing going on, maybe. He didn't fit into his family as much. That's how I kind of feel about it. I always think that, like, Tristan's older brother is Owen. Yeah, It always right, surprises yeah. me, you know? Yeah. Well, like, when you first see uh, your characters together, I mean, it's just, like, such a, like, contrast. And then to think that, like, you have this older, like, Tristan is this older jock brother. Yeah. brother. That's got to be a part of something, you know? Yeah. yeah. And that's why I think he's kind of, like separated from his family almost like I don't think it's a horrible situation I think he's like very involved with friends and like school that's kind of yeah. his and, like, closest yeah, family yeah. his friends I don't think he's hanging out with his family all the time mm -hmm. like, I yeah, I don't... awesome okay so we're gonna go to some questions that people tweeted in and posted in <laughs> last year um <clears throat> Okay, so question for you guys. I have one, and this one is quite, quite similar. So, or it will be the part two. So, I know that fourteen A has, you know, it's been a while since it's aired, and so where are Maya and Tristan right now? Like, what is their relationship? Right now, I don't think they're on. No, um, it's kind of hard because like we film the whole season, yeah. and then we don't really know. There's exactly so much that they can't. Say. Yeah, like well, we don't know what's aired, but. If we're not mistaken, yeah. I don't think we're on good terms. No. I think, like, I'm kind of, like, always, like, Tristan, just stop being so mature, and you're always, like, so, like... Like, you're trying to control my yeah, bike, like, and you get everything. Yeah, little jabs at me still. Like, that's what I remember from filming. You always, like, Tristan always giving Maya little jabs yeah. and, like, things, and Maya just being, like... Oh. Do you think, like, Tristan's jealous because of all the... Because there's also the Miles thing, which has got to be kind of weird between... I think guys. Tristan's I jealous that Maya kind of... Like, he said it before in one of their mm -hmm. fights, right? But it's like, I think he finds that maybe she has more of an advantage because she's not a gay kid in high school. Like, you know, but yeah. they're best friends. Like, I get those mm -hmm. vibes sometimes. Yeah. That it's like, oh, she can get any guy she wants, and she can just, and whereas I have to struggle and fight through all these people that might not be good for me, and like, you know? So I think that's... But I think nearing the end, you're almost more angry at Miles than you are at Maya. Yeah, and I he was mainly mad at Maya for Mr. Yates. I yeah. think that, like, they're kind of, they're probably at the point now, though, too, where they're, like, knowing it's been going on for a while. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. I have a confession. I think that's, like, my favorite scene of 13, when you just yell. Yeah. Like, you yell at Maya. That was, because. like, the last thing we filmed that day. Yeah. I remember it was, like, we didn't have a lot of time to do it or anything. Yeah. I remember, like, really being stressed out about that. Pressed for time, yeah. But it went well. This perfectly leads into this question from Dessa underscore 48. Says, What's the greatest thing about filming together? So, you two as friends. Oh, well, <laughs> no. I don't know. Like, I just love working with Lyle. We, like, yeah. we, we have similar acting styles. I think we really, like, get along. And we're always on the same page with things. So that's, like, it's really great when you can do that and act with someone who's totally on the same page as you. Mm -hmm. You guys are friends in real life, too, which is... Yeah, yeah we live always. together. And we live together. <laughs> See? And it's like we like the same films and the same shows and everything, so like that's how it comes into us having that same sort of acting style and mm -hmm. like just getting that about each other because we like a lot of the same things. And like so. knowing what we both want the same thing out of the scene and stuff. Yeah, totally. You guys can talk honestly about that, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that's pretty cool from, like, a TV world that I found is that if your characters are friends, usually, well, if all goes well, you become friends with that person you spend every day with them. Yeah, yeah. well, that's, like, like, how relationships, like, people start dating their coworkers. Yeah. Totally. Because they're with them every day, if things go well. And then there might be scenarios where people don't get along, but <laughs> that's nobody here. Um, okay, the Dot Cafe, that's on point. Um, what... Current character do you relate to the most? Relate to which mm, I have cool. to think of all the characters. Well, let's, yeah, now. let's look at this poster over yes, here. We're surrounded okay. by the grassy posters, including the one behind us. Hmm. Can we believe that? Oh. It makes for a killer hmm. view. Huh. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> right now. Okay, I'm just... trying to think of like what is going on Because like relate to is a tough one. It's not like just who you like, but like it's hard because I'm 20, and I don't feel like I 
relate to too many like high school kids mm-hmm. right now in my life. Like so you know, it's Mr. Simpson. Is that it? <laughs> I can see yeah. relating to Zoe in the way that at my high school it was like okay, I big. was like working in the show business or whatever, and so it was like you had to choose who were your friends and who just wanted to be your friends because you know. Interesting. That's a really good yeah. answer. I think it's I'll have great. to go with that too. Yeah. It was the same situation. Yeah. Right now, I mean. I would like to relate to um, um, Drew because he's like the handsome, popular guy at school. But that wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> this is my fantasy. <clears throat> okay, um, we'll, we'll do one more question from uh, our fans that tweeted. Um, okay, so a little bit like a break from the show, but from you guys, what advice would you give to someone who has trouble making friends or who are bad influences? And this is from Grey's Anatomy Lover 506. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Um. Who has trouble making friends? <laughs> I think that it's like I like everyone's had a punk in their group, you know. No, totally. But yeah. it's like I think a lot of people too focus in high school and like having a lot of friends or being like with this big group of people and just from personal experience when I was in high school, I honestly only ever had like one or two close friends at a time. Like, I was never in a big group, like, going to parties. Like, that wasn't me. So, I mean, um, I guess I would just say the best advice is, like, really look for the quality, not the quantity. If there's somebody that you get along with and you're vibing well with, then, like, go with that. Stick with them. Don't worry about how many friends you have. Exactly. Feel the same? Um, Yeah, well, because I had, like, quite a large friend group when I started high school, and I found that it was kind of sucked because no one was really paying attention to anyone. I remember finding at lunch, like, I made this one friend, my friend Jen, and we would just talk amongst each other even though there was this big group of people. And I realized it's like, oh, all I need is her. I don't need all these other people because they're kind of ignoring me anyway because yeah. there's so many people. So, yeah, I think a smaller friend group with people you genuinely get along with and like is the best way to make friends yeah. and keep your friends. And sometimes I feel like you find out the hard way. Which is like you follow the bad influence mm-hmm. and you do something bad, and then you realize it wasn't worth it. Yeah. Because you lose all your freedom. And there. after high school, there's no way that all those big groups are like talking to everyone in their group and always hanging out. Like I think everyone eventually gets to a point where you just have your like group of the friends. That's all it. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> totally. <clears throat> okay, awesome. We're gonna go back to you guys. So how about we start with Ren? So we're just gonna go in, in order of our list at the bottom here. Um, Another I'm great think- question. question. <laughs> I'm kind of thinking of how to word my question right now. Can you come back to me? Sure, definitely. How about Christine? Okay, my friend from Scotland, Angela, she was wondering if you guys could make your own episode. Of what would it be about? Ooh, make your own episode. Oh, oh good my question. Gosh. That hard. Make your own episode. It would be about, hmm, like it would be like a road trip or something, uh-huh. and then it would, <laughs> yeah, it. <laughs> it would be like kind of like a road road trip in like Arizona kind of thing, yeah. like go on a trip and then like their they car breaks down, over, yeah, 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 or like they have a hit and run or something bad happens. Like I know what you did last summer. Kind of, but like less supernatural. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like a bit more real, you know what I mean? Real, <laughs> and it's like a small friend group, and they all like fight and have to come to terms with it in their own way, and they get so close to each other, and it might be people that you like an unlikely group friends. of friends. Yeah, and then they come back being like, we have shared experiences, yeah. feelings with each other. No one. Olivia, I have a feeling that this script is written. It's written it's on written. your computer. Yeah. <laughs> so ready to go. Yeah. Olivia <laughs> writes fan fiction in her spare time. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay, let's go to Mary. Um, let's see. Trying to think. Um, come back to me, I guess, because I just. Cool. I just oh. Robin, you're up. Okay. My question is, Olivia, if Ma- Maya was gay, who would you want her to date? And Lyle, if Tristan was straight, who would you want him to date? Great question. Thank you. Hey. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> this is a great oh, line. Okay. Um, never, never. Okay, I'll go. I'll go. I would want. I would want to date Allie. Allie. 
just because <laughs> of, um, they're with me and with me all the time. But no, also because like I think that they would just make a really cute couple. <laughs> if I was gay, can she still date a straight girl? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, loophole. Loophole. Um, like Raya. I mean, <laughs> what's her name? Shay. I just know her by Raya. Shay, because I love Raya and I want to work with her. We never get to work together. Awesome. Yeah. That was a great question. Thank you. Um, Ryan. You go. Hi. Okay. Um, my question is: Was there any particular scene that was hardest for you to film, like acting-wise, or? Um, for me, I think like. Wait, Krista. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, do loud first. Okay. Oh no, I don't now I'm on this okay. spot. Okay. Um uh, and I have to think like all these episodes I Pressure film, it was hard. Oh, um I guess I had like a heart attack in season Oh yeah. And that was kind of, like, I've never even, thank God, known anyone that's had a heart attack, except then right before I did my scene, somebody who worked on set said they had a heart attack and kind of showed me. So that was difficult just because I've never had a heart attack, so I didn't really know what I would be feeling or anything. But um, then I got some advice from somebody on set. and Speaking of attacks, <laughs> I think one of the hardest things for me to film was when Maya had her panic attack because I had never had one before and I played it kind of wrong because like I thought it was right and then my brother actually had a panic attack while I was with him like um, a little bit later on and I was like oh so I played that completely wrong <laughs> <laughs> but, like whatever but that was one of the hardest yeah, well, things sure for me because it was hard because I don't know I feel like I thought I had panic attacks before but I don't think I really had until because I was trying to look on the computer and like look at what they looked like but there wasn't really a lot of well, people filming themselves having a While having attack. a pet. Healthy. Yeah. A panic panic attack. Attack. So that was kind of hard for me to. But I think that's like a, a really challenging thing about the show is because the show goes there and it has mm -hmm. all these extreme things that happen, but you know, for, you know, the actors are so young. Mm -hmm. So there's so many times these things, these things have been happening to us, whether it be like coming out or having a heart attack or a panic attack or getting mm -hmm. assaulted, and it's just. You know, I, I, I think that even though you were saying, you know, like, I don't know if I played it, it's just really about playing, you know, the intensity of that moment. Yeah. As intense and honest as you can. Because it's never going to be exactly the same. Yeah. Um, but, and you guys are usually the judge. <laughs> if it was totally believable or not, but mm -hmm. I think we're <laughs> great. Um, okay, who's, oh, Ren. Are you up oh. now? You, have, have you thought of your question? Yeah. Um, I guess for both of you, uh, what Degrassi alumni haven't you met, but uh, you would like to? Good one. Um, what have I met? <laughs> yeah. Wait, is there a picture of them? Um, I've actually met a That's lot of them in, like, the weirdest time. Yeah. Like, I think I met the girl who played Ellie, like... Stacy. Stacy. Wait. Stacy yeah. played Ellie Laurie. Oh, yeah, Stacy played yeah. Ellie. Um, I think I, like, didn't really talk to her, but, like, I saw her when I was filming something else, like, once. So, technically, it's kind of I guess, like, one of the only ones I can think that I haven't met is Nina, so... I was thinking maybe, that, too. Yeah, and I've heard, like, stories of her, and, like, good stories. All good. <laughs> so... <laughs> I've heard some bad things. Yeah. <laughs> no. I guess that would be cool to meet her. Yeah. Because she's the only one I can think. I always wanted to meet the twins from the original Degrassi, which I never got a chance to, but I'm sure nobody nobody has any idea. So that's totally fine. Uh, Eric and Alexis. This is a very long time ago. Um, Eric and Alexis. Eric sorry? and Alexis. Eric and Alexis. Yes, thank yeah. you. I told you they were going to school me, even on the old one. <laughs> um, okay, who did we take a break on? Christine. Christine. Did we take? Were you thinking of a question, or have you left us? Christina. Um, here. Oh, are you there, love? We can't yeah. see you, but we can hear you. Why don't we go? 
Can you hear us? Yeah. Okay, why don't you just say your question? We can't see you, but I'm sure the image will come back. Well, I'm going to Quebec this summer. I was wondering if there's any places I could sh should go check out. Oh, this is one for Olivia. Oh, well, I didn't live in Quebec for that long, and I lived in the country. But if you've been there, or anywhere in Canada. Oh, anywhere in Canada. Like Montreal, or Montreal. Just mostly Quebec. Well, in Quebec, if you go down to Wakefield, there's a really cute little cafe called Shea Eric, which I used to hang out. Like, that was my place when I was, like, a baby and, like, a little toddler. So, <laughs> yeah, if you were going down to Wakefield. But that's basically it. I lived in the country. In, like, Quebec City. Chris, do you have any advice? Oh, uh, I've been to Quebec City since I was, like, a child. Right? Yeah, great trip. Oh my great god. Trip. Remember Tamara's on Yeah. He owns a restaurant there in uh, Old Montreal. In Old Montreal. Amazing. Yeah. Garden Montreal. I've been there. Yeah. Montreal is just a fantastic it's place to go to in general. It's a really yeah, unique, Montreal a unique really place cool. in Canada. Yeah. Um, Denise, are, we, are you up? Oh, there. I can't remember no. who. I can't remember who. You're not. You're not. Is she like. She like, like no, how am I? Uh, hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Why don't you uh, uh, ask a question? Ask a question. Um, my question is, what what characters in relationships on the show do you want to be together? Like, which which who's your OTP basically? Okay. I'm looking, and it might be cool to see. If you see them looking, it's because our office is surrounded by posters. Yeah, so we're just show. kidding. So I feel like if it was possible, like Tristan and Dallas would be really hot. Oh, well, Dallas is graduated. <laughs> oh. Super straight. Um, <laughs> I was looking on here, and like, I don't. I think it would be cool to see Lola with um. What's yeah, Lola Aaron's was in, like, an older What's guy. What's Aaron's character? What's Aaron's character? Yeah. Jonah? Jonah. Jonah and Lola. Jonah. That would be a kind of, like, cool couple, because they both have that. Or, like, Lola energy. with an older guy. I think. It's not Mr. Green. Lola and Yates. Lola <laughs> and Yates. Oh, Hunter. I think Hunter's a cool guy, no? Yeah. Hunter can match up with someone. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm I'm just, no, no comment. No <laughs> comment. I forgot I will not comment single. on that. Yeah, so that will be my answer. Just because it looks cool. I have a question from Twitter. Twitter Chris question. has a twist a question. A, a tweet question is a question. <laughs> um, Vicky Degrassian fourteen asked, which celebrity would you like to film an episode with? Um <clears throat> <laughs> okay, Indeed. well, let's have like Quinn and Tarantino direct, Ooh. like guest star direct or something, or like Lars Ventura. I was to say, mind Lars Ventura. <laughs> I want him to direct. Yeah, I Lars will the... direct one, and then Quinn will direct one. Yeah. But actors. <laughs> oh, do we have to choose actors? Well, I think or, that was thing. or wait, who would we want to work with? Celebrity. Okay, yeah, that's, to that's work with. Um, yeah, that's, that's my answer. Dama, who would you have on the list? Okay. No. Ooh. No. I mean, what could you possibly play? Oh, right. The teacher. I mean, it'd be pretty funny if Gaga played like the lunch lady. The whole she could. Um, the the American Horror Story. Yes. I don't know. That one's a tough one. I'll have to think about that. I'm gonna come back. <laughs> if I just scream out a celebrity's name out of nowhere, it's because it came to me. <laughs> and um, uh, Katie Riley wants to know: Is your style similar or different from your character? Very different. <laughs> <laughs> they so quickly jumped on that. Maya wears like a lot of like matching, and I don't usually match my outfits as much. Tristan as wears so much color. Yes, it same. just kills me. Maya <laughs> wears like a lot of bright pink and like and necklaces, like very very big necklaces, and I usually like wearing like one single like small necklace. <laughs> and then um yeah, like if I'm gonna wear a color, it's usually like baby pink. That's the only color I really wear. Everything else is like white and black and gray. Very different. Anywhere? Or 
or do you want to go to our list? Let's go to our list. Let's go to our list. Okay. How about this? From Ariel Thiel, what is your favorite band's and favorite song? Uh, we'll say right now. Right now. Not okay, all time. right now. I don't know about my favorite band. My favorite song right now is Solitaire by Marina. We've been singing it out. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite band, I think I would have to say of all time, just because I've listened to them like for as long as I can remember, is No Doubt. Oh, so good. So yeah, it kind of goes into like Gwen Stefani, like No Doubt, like all that. Like I've listened, just Gwen Stefani in general. Like I've been listening to like her voice and like as long as I can remember. So I would just have a to girl. Say, mm. Great job. Just a girl. How was going? Yeah, I just. She has one of them. Yeah. Just a girl. One. Um. Okay, let's go to another. Using the show as cover. Oh, oh, that was kind of similar. We're going through this. Okay, this is for Olivia. Oh gosh. Oh my God, what? Zaya or Matlinsworth? Mm. Matlinsworth, because he's rich. <laughs> <laughs> and notes that is the right way to pick every village. Yeah. <laughs> Do they have money? But you know, Zig's cute, and Zig can like protect you if there was like a fight, you know. Yeah, I guess, but it's like if Zig gets arrested for like. But can he buy her a new car? You're not wrong. He can steal it. Steal me a car. Okay, what? Okay, so a bit of a more heavier question. What life lessons do you think Degrassi can teach to you? I mean, it, it seems pretty general. Though. A lot of life lessons. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you really like. Protection. Yeah. Um, I mean, don't send nudes for money. <laughs> yeah, how about this? Which one do you stand behind where you're like, that's a good lesson to tell you? You know, I think it's like we've had so many pregnant on the show, but it's just like, I guess I just know a lot of people from my school who have, like, you know, like, struggled with teen pregnancy. And it's just if you really actually did watch Degrassi and, like, learned the lessons from it. Like, it is totally preventable and not something that you have to worry about or do end that. up going through. Like, if you really just use protection and, like, are thinking about what you're doing, then you shouldn't have to deal with it. Also, there is a lot in the show <clears throat> about the way social media is used, and of course, like, we're seeing Degrassi news and sharing, yeah. like, images of yourself. Um, I'm always, like, really curious by that, because I grew up in a te as a teenager, and that wasn't a thing. Um, so, you think that's an important lesson? I mean, just, like, how you... Um, Especially now, how you know, act on has social a cell media. phone, and everyone's sending pictures, like, Definitely. And kids yeah. so young, are, like, have cell phones. Like, my 12-year-old brother has a cell phone. It's like... Yeah. It's, like, crazy, and it's, like, well, the younger you are, then you have a cell phone, and you're using that kind of stuff, the more immature you're going to be with it. So I think it's good that Degrassi is, like, showing you everything that can happen and everything that can go wrong with that kind of stuff because more and more kids are getting younger and still using this kind of social media. But they don't have, like, the maturity level to know how to use it. Amen. <laughs> I mean, Degrassi really taught me to make sure not to send news on, on social media. I was going to be like, oh, better not. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll do one more from uh, um, a posted question, then we'll go back to you guys. So this this one. one here that excites you? That this one? one? Yeah. Okay, so this is from Frank's XO Lyle. I am such a huge fan of yours, and I just love your fashion style. Where do you like to shop? Ooh. Well, um, I like to shop kind of, I don't like to shop at many chain stores that have a lot of, like, you know, locations. Like, I do like, like, Pop Man and stuff, but um, I like going into the kind of, like, little boutiques and, like, or, into like, cool stores. Like, I, when I went through Europe, like, I would just go to a bunch of, like, stores that I've never heard of and, like, just find stuff. And I think that's the way to go about it, and then no one else is really going to have the... Like, you know, when someone asks where I get things, a lot of the time I'm like, oh, I actually don't really remember the name of the mm -hmm. store because it was, like, when I was traveling somewhere, I went into some random store. So, um, yeah, I would just say just go, like, give the stores that you've never heard of a chance because usually they have really cool stuff that you can't find anywhere else. So isn't that the worst where 
even if you're at like a party and it's like the person's on the opposite, or even on the street, I get mad. Yeah. yeah, it's like I'm anxiety. Like, oh, someone yeah. has the exact same top, and that's when people are like, where'd you get that? I lie. Yeah. I don't not say them. I send them the wrong way. Oh, just okay. tip to you, so you never just, believe me. Never believe me. So it's that? H&M. Yeah, right. yeah. No, because it is the worst feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Like, exactly. and H&M and stuff like that's like those are great places to shop for your like basics. Like you want a white t-shirt. Totally. It's like it doesn't matter where you get the white t-shirt. Of, yeah. yeah. But if you want like some pieces that it's like you're going to go out and no one else is going to have it, then go somewhere you've never heard of before. Also like vintage shopping. No, well, vintage that, I mean shopping. just like go to the most random places. Mm -hmm. like, I mean some of the best stuff being yeah. like um, in village. Yeah. That, like, yeah. my body perfect totally. and it's like I couldn't find it anybody, anywhere else. And then I tell no one where I got it. Um, okay, back to you guys. Do you guys have enough time to think of some questions? Yeah. Okay, so why don't we yeah, go to Mary. All right, so Lyle and Olivia, since your characters are currently in their sophomore year, they still have um, quite a bit of time at Degrassi. Um, what, what are some plots that you would like to see them have? I I'd, <laughs> I'd like Maya to definitely go through like some drug problems. Like when Chad's being on. It's kind of like it's more for me just like selfish. I like it's fun to act that stuff. So that's why I want it. Yeah, and it's kind of like a running thing. We were actually just saying to the writers, like before we came into this interview, we're like, "So, like, are we doing drugs this season?" Yeah, like, like we just because it's just fun as an actor, but like that's actually, the best thing you can like play. At least. Yeah, it's like just to be kind of out of it. And, like, like coked just, up. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Chris does. No. She's um, Yeah, but I don't know. I mean, I, I'm pretty happy with the stories that I've gotten so far. Like, they've been pretty, like, nothing like I had that I went through in high school. So I've got to, like, act and, like, actually do something new that I haven't done. So I don't know. Keep surprising me, I guess. Ooh, good. Awesome. Yeah. Robin. Okay, my question is for you, Adamo. Um, if you could go back to Degrassi as Marco, who would you want to interact with, and what would you want him to do? Oh, like, like current Degrassi. If I was to just yeah. really Marco would pop up. <clears throat> you know what? I, I thought Marco would make a great like student counselor. Yeah, I think so. Like, yeah. because he was studying social work, and Marco always wanted to be you know, believed, and like he was really. He wanted to help everybody, was always worried about everybody, and wanted to change the world. I feel like I could see Marco if he had to, like, if it was to pop up as, like, a, a student counselor. Like, kids would come in and tell him about his troubles kind of thing. Like a guidance counselor. Guidance yeah. counselor. Like That's when what Buffy works at, like, yeah. yeah. school. Yeah. I can see myself as, like, Marco as the guidance counselor. I think that would make that. sense. And then the best part about that is, like, I would get to interact with all the characters. Yeah. yeah. On your grassy, every character needs some counsel. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You'll be busy. Yeah. <laughs> the busiest student council ever. Um, Ryan. Okay. So this question is for Olivia, but it's also for like all of you. So Olivia, we're like we have the same exact birthday, and so how is like the I'm 18, you're 18. How is going through this part of your life different while being famous? Sorry? What did, how is it being... How is this part of your life different? Cause oh. Famous. Famous. <laughs> um, I feel like it's kind of scary because, like, I didn't get to totally go through the normal high school experience and stuff. So I feel like even though I'm 18, now I'm still acting like such a little, like, kid and being like, I still want my high school experience because I didn't really get to do grade 12. Uh -huh. I mean, I don't know what what else to compare it to because I've only been me, but I don't know. It's not that crazy or anything. I don't find it that crazy. Except for that I got a lot of birthday wishes from a lot of people mm. that I didn't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Ryan. Um, Ren, oh, I think Ren's on a break. So how about Christine? Oh, there you are, Ren. We'll come back to you. I was wondering, do you guys have like? Oh. I was wondering, do you guys have like a dream vacation, like a favorite country you want to go to? Or? Um, I wanna really wanna go to Morocco. 
Um, I mean, I guess like, it would be cool to go to like Fiji or something. Uh, like a kind of like magical like island. That would be nice. But I also really liked doing like a Euro trip. I really liked that sort of vacation. Like relaxing on a beach is fun, but it's also fun to go like see all these cities you've never been to. Awesome. Hey, Ren. Hey. You got a question? Yeah. Um, is there anyone from the Degrassi Bermuda Triangle, like someone who uh, <laughs> kind of disappeared, that you would uh, a character you'd want to work with now? That's easy. I would say Tori Alex Steele, because she's just she's like one of my best friends, and I love her, and she's like one of the most talented actresses I know. So I would probably say the same. Too. Yeah, we would. Just... We both got to like. Like she was our best friend, yeah. our character's best friend. We were and we friends. still all hang out like yeah. every chance we get. So I think I would definitely like to see her. That's such a good way oh, to yeah. put it. <laughs> the Marie. I mean, it's, it's oh, that's is testing my patience, say. Krista. Does it have something they can't know on <laughs> Perhaps. It just says Sarah got her G2. <laughs> she drew a picture she got her license. Guys, we are a ways left on our license. <laughs> we are really high class. Guys, it's just... <laughs> Our office is as real as the show. <laughs> um, okay, so Janice. Ooh, you changed, changed position. Location. Yeah, good job. Um, well, my question is, and this is a bit peculiar, but... Have y'all ever had, this is like weird because it kind of has nothing to do with Degrassi, but like, have y'all ever had the food or seafood, crustacean, whatever you want to call it, crawfish or crawdads or crayfish? Like, like, have we ever, have we ever had crawfish? crawfish? Is that the question? <laughs> Um, is, is crawfish like a specific I don't like fish? seafood, so I definitely haven't ate it, eaten it. But I probably have. Yeah, I, I enjoy I all kinds of fish, so I'm yeah, sure at one too. point it was on my plate. Wait, is it is a crawfish the same as a crayfish? <laughs> What's a crayfish? Those things like at college. college. Yeah, like, yeah, like um, a crawfish is a crustacean. It's not an actual fish, but it's like it's like a lobster, but a smaller, like mini version of a lobster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. oh, I'm doing right now, right now. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. Not that I can. It's friend. funny because here it is like the most common food ever. We are in the middle of crawfish season right now, so everybody is getting some. And it's just like I know that in a different part of the United States or Canada or wherever, people don't even know crawfish exist <laughs> or what they are or never had them. It's just hilarious to me. Brown crab, 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 crab. Just ship the ships up. Awesome, thanks. Um, did we go through everybody? Wave if we missed somebody for this next round of questions. I think we got everybody. I have one online. Okay, yeah. Okay, Angela Drianka Fields asks, what's at the top of your bucket list? Profit. Um <clears throat> Top of my bucket list would probably be to do like a role where I'm like, um, have you guys ever seen Poker House? No. <laughs> well, if you have, like to do a role like Selma Blair in Poker House, like a really like messed up, like drug addict kind of alcoholic. <laughs> like dark. Like really dark and just messed up all the time and getting to play like crazy all the time. A role, <laughs> like a messed up role would be my. Yeah, I think my bucket list would be to actually like, um, like make my own film. Like that would be like a long term like bucket to actually have like a film that I wrote and starred in. And... Awesome. And Lyle, Caitlin asks, what was your favorite place you visited in Europe? Oh, that's like such a hard question. Um, I'd have to say, like, London, just in general, is the place I'd probably go back to the most. Just because it was, like, it was, like, I felt like I'd been there before, even though I hadn't. Uh, but Switzerland was super cool. Switzerland was, like, 
I knew that I wanted to go to Switzerland, and that was, like, my one place that I was, like, you got to go to Switzerland, like, on this Euro trip. That's the one place I really want to go. So I liked it. But then Germany was really cool, too. So it's, like, everywhere. Awesome. Got any more for us there, Krista? Um, I have an interesting one from Angela. What's your lock screen on your phone? Like, what's the background? Like, yeah. Oh, I think that passcode. I was like, oh, it's my dog. <laughs> what's your thing? Like, silk sheets. <laughs> silk sheets. Betty. <laughs> Krista, pass me mine. Oh, yeah. Can we put the all three of them together? Yeah. I think this will represent us very fully. Oh my gosh, Xavier got his hair cut. Oh, that's really good. My brother cut his hair. <laughs> we did. Oh. Are we showing her? What are we doing? Mine is just really pretty predictable. Oh, Madonna. It's Madonna beside Gaga. I have to do it. Silk oh, sheets. <laughs> Silk sheets. Who's this on your thing? On your phone? My dog, Betty. Betty? She lives with my parents since, oh, like, she's Betty. used to living on a farm, so she's not going to move to the city, but, like, I miss her and love her. So I Betty. tried to pick her one up once, and she screamed at me. She does that. So Betty's not a city girl? No. Oh, she gets a country gal. Country. <laughs> Would you guys ever get an animal at your house? No. No, okay. I don't want to take That's care of it. <laughs> I baby we babysat the dogs for like three days. Like, and we were like happy when it was over. Yeah, no. and we we're like, oh, we can't go out. Like we have to yeah. stay here with the dogs. Yeah. I don't know how people are like parents. I'd get a nanny. <laughs> <laughs> What's one Canadian food that people have to try? I guess is poutine the Canadian food. Yeah. Yes. What other Canadian food is there? Have you ever had a beaver tail? That's oh, Canadian thing? Tail. Yeah, that's good. Okay, yeah, try it. Or, like, this isn't really a food, Ketchup and I don't know if it's just Canadian, but, like, if you ever go to, like, a sugar bush or sometime, something like that, they'll do, like, it's, like, syrup, but it's, like, gooey, but it's not mm. fully liquidy, and they have it on a stick, and it's so good. It, t- it tastes like syrup toffee, kind of. Oh, I know a good one. Um, if you're, like, from America, because they don't have it here, and you're Subways, <gasps> here in Canada, we have... Sub sauce. And it's like I went to America and I'm like, can I get some sub sauce? And they're like, what? And I'm like, sub sauce. And they're like, we have sweet onion. But it's like, it's kind of like sweet onion, but it's not. So it's like, you got to try the sub sauce if you come to Canada. That's a big one. Mm-hmm. That's your most proud thing. The most proud thing <laughs> about sub-sauce. Canada is sub sauce. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to have time to go one more round with all of you guys. Uh, so last question each. Make them count, whatever you've uh, been dying to know. Shoot. I mean... Christine, can you hear us? Yeah. Okay. Um, question, question for... you hear that? In your opinion, what do you think is... Sorry? In your opinion, what do you think the scariest part about an audition is? Auditions are just like the number one most stressful, like nerve wracking things of life, I find. I know. It's like I'll have to know a million lines for like a day of working Degrassi, but it's like I'll that one page of script that you have to learn for an audition, I'm more likely to screw up. Like it's so nerve wracking. Yeah. And I get really like shaky before I go in, like my I, mouth gets dry. Yeah, like I can't control it. It's like and I'm not a shaky person about anything. Like nothing makes me but like I physically will like shake before going into an audition. So it's just like they're a whole other thing. Like, they're a whole other thing. <laughs> yeah, like if you want to be an actor, make sure you really want to be an actor. An audition. Um, Janice. Just me. Just me. Oh, no, you, oh, no, you, um, my question is, is on the show, um, Claire's constantly scared that Eli won't be able to take care of a child because he gets mad over the little things because he's bipolar. Would you agree with her in saying that, you know, bipolar people just you know, sometimes may not be able to take or be fit to raise a child? Really tough. Yeah, yeah, because I don't know that's been diagnosed diagnosed with bipolar, so I can't really answer that question truly, but I feel like anyone, like, there's nobody in this world that can just be like, no, you're not fit to do that. Like, I think if you have the passion for it, then it's like, you can, but if Eli's the kind of person that's like, going to be freaking out over the little stuff and, like, 
Yeah, yeah. it's a person-to-person basis. Yeah, I it's think. definitely. I think one of the great things about Eli's storyline, too, is um, exploring all the ways that, you know, different kind of medications and how people have to try certain different kinds of medications so they find a medication that can work for them. And I think what we saw with Eli's character is that they did find, he did find a medication that worked for him that actually made him a better version of himself. Yeah. Um, so I think in that sense, you know, um, you know, I think Eli could totally have been fit to, or totally be fit to be a dad. Yeah. But, like, but like he was right, he was right, you know. You just, you just don't really know when you know it. Exactly. Monroe, if you ever need, have the opportunity, because mm-hmm. I know he definitely did a lot of research on that. My mom is bipolar, so it's just like a subject. So it's like, what are you trying to say? I'm fine. I mean, I'm 13. I'm fine. Like, what are what you, what you trying to say? What are you trying to say? Oh my gosh, you got you. Yeah. Yeah, you're very well spoken yeah. for a 13 year old. Don't listen to Claire. <laughs> um, okay, awesome. Thanks, Janice. Um, Mary. All right, this is for all three of you this time, because I feel like I've been ignoring you, Adamo. Um, what's the most influential book that you guys have read, like each of you? Krista wants to jump on this one. Tell me so that I know. Wait. Oh, I feel like well, the only one that you told me like that I that one about, about Marilyn about Marilyn Monroe and like all the little acting things she did. Oh, okay, yeah, I know which one you're talking about. Oh, there's like a few that I yeah. read. Um, I guess for me, I read there's this book called like Fragments, and it's like um all these like all this poetry and stuff by Marilyn and like her journal entries and stuff, and. Uh, I've always had an interest in Marilyn Monroe. I've always been a big fan of her. So to read that and like to see all of her personal and like some of her poems and stuff, one of her poems particularly, like, really favorite poem. So um, yeah, I guess I would say that one I really liked because I feel like I got a really good insight into her and her mind. Olivia? I don't know. I don't know either. I, I mean, there's a few books that have had like so hard. an influence on me. I really like reading, I guess, biographies. And my dad got me this book a while ago. It was like a falling apart book. And I forget what actor it was on. I forget her name. This is terrible. I forget her name, but it's the girl who played the first Lolita. Who's that? But whatever. <laughs> I don't, it's, I'm blanking, but I read a book on her, and that was really interesting in her life up until this point. Actually, going on this biography trail, I just thought of one that I remember I read when I was. Time's up. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like we all swore. At the same time. Um, no, I think yeah, on this biography trail, I remember I read this bio. Oh, uh, about like Monty Cliff, which is like an old gay actor. He was like closeted back in the day, Montgomery Clift. Oh, Montgomery Clift. And I remember I read his bio, and I read it at an interesting time for me because I was on the show and I was closeted, and I just really helped me put stuff into perspective because I got to thinking like this was somebody who was closeted in like 1954 and in the spotlight. He was in a movie with Marilyn, right? Yes, he was. What uh, me, uh, uh, Miss? Oh, what's it called? We're all blanking today. Um, there's a couple of great moments in that book where I got to thinking, like, the only thing harder than being closeted in 2006 when I was contemplating, you know, coming out of stuff was, like, being closeted in, like, 1956 yeah. and um, yeah. seeing what he had gone through. And it actually really gave me courage. I was like, okay, he, I mean, he was definitely somebody who I think was a victim of that stress. And, uh, yeah, it just really gave me perspective at the right exact time that I needed it. Isn't that so weird how sometimes you, like, read books at, like, like the perfect men, time yeah, of your totally. life or, like, movies or anything that it's, like, just, like, gives you the answers to, like, that exact moment. It's like fate has brought us together. Yeah. Um, yeah. Awesome. No, thank you. That was a great question. Also, Bye. Olivia, I searched on IMDb. Sue Lyon? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. one. That's her. Awesome. <laughs> I want to get triggered on it. Um, Robin. Okay, my last question is, what has been the most surprising or shocking storyline discovered through a read-through? 
I guess the cam one. The cam one. Probably, just because, like, I, Dylan was probably one of the only cast told that it was going to be, like, a... Yeah, like, I just remember, I remember looking over at Chloe, and she was like, yeah, that was a pretty yeah. good one. Did we film that one? Yeah, we did. Great behind the scenes video. Yeah, it's a great behind the scenes <laughs> video for it. I just remember up. another, like, surprising one was, like, when Maya and, like, Harry were getting together. Do you remember that recently? Right, I love that one. It was kind of racy, and um, I just remember he says something, like, very sexual, and I just remember Jacob Neam was, like, at the water station, like, filling up his cup, and I remember he said it, and because I was, like, so young, I was, like, 14 or 15, he, like, knocked over all the cups, and it made a big, like, commotion, and he was like, oh, sorry, because it was awkward. <laughs> So yeah, that was like one I remember seeing. That's awesome. <laughs> it's always so hard to see your friends leave too when you're on a show. And like somebody uh, like all the time. Yeah. It just, it really is. And it's kind of, even if you leave in a group or like, because usually like on Degrassi, like everybody graduates eventually and the people are older than you they leave and it's just, and then the cam was even more dramatic, obviously the way he left. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like on a, we're done Degrassi note, you know, it was like a really heavy moment. Um, um, Ryan. Ryan. I love Ryan. Just yelled. Just yelled. <laughs> so, like, how do you feel being um, one of like the longest running Canadian television shows, like franchises? So cool. It's like, I don't know. You just, I feel like the one, the one thing I did before Degrassi was Arthur, and I did the voice on Arthur, and that was like a show that like I watched so when I was little. So it was like I came in and I was, and I even think it was the same like season. I think it was like season 11 or something that oh. I came into that show and then I came into season 11 of Degrassi. <laughs> so it was like, any long running shows I've You're on. Like, <laughs> I better get an audition. Or so. an <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but I just think it's like, it's really cool coming in and especially like a soap opera type thing, like being a part of something that you'll say the name Degrassi and every single and like, person is like, oh, Degrassi. year olds know it and 12-year-olds know it. Yeah, everyone knows it. Everyone knows like you're a part of something that's actually like made a stamp. Yeah. In television. Really cool. mm -hmm. And it's something I didn't really know until like later on after I had already got the show because I'd never really watched it. And I just knew like the How to Be Indie Girl was on it. Yeah. That was like <laughs> the only thing I knew about Degrassi. So that was cool to like discover that like as I was already on the show. I think the cool thing about this show is that it's about young people and no matter what happens, there's always going to be young people. There's always going to be young people going through school. Mm -hmm. um, so like in so many ways, the inspiration of the show is you guys. Um, and it's kind of crazy. Like, the show started in, like, 19... What was it, Krista? 86 was the first? Kids of Degrassi Street. Oh, Kids of Degrassi Street. Like, when yeah, the first started, was, like, the 90s. That's yeah. yeah. And, you know, before, you know, any of us were born. Uh, and to think, like, those same kinds of stories are continuing. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's... There's always going to be something that happens in a high school that needs to be talked about. Yeah. Does it make you terrified to have gone back to go back to high school? Or like to go through high school? It doesn't scare me, but I'm just over it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Degrassi is particularly a very dramatic high yeah. school. It's not really I'd be down for Degrassi, it'd be so fun. Like every day something happens. Like, fires. <laughs> fires. Shooting. Like, yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't want that? Oh god. Excitement. Gosh. <laughs> just kidding. That was funny. Um Okay, Ren. You have the final question. Make it hot. Make it hot. <laughs> um, Lyle, in your opinion, after um, the trials break up, do you think there is any hope for them getting back together ever? Um, yeah, I don't think, like... I think, like, um, people always, like, grow and change, and, like, that's why people will be together, and then they'll, like, split up. Uh, but I guess it also, it's like, it depends if you grow in the right way that can uh, make them go back together. I don't think it's anything completely ruled out, but I do know that Tristan's probably going to try. Uh, I think I, I was told I can... Yeah. yeah, okay, yeah, so I can give you guys a little hint here. Uh, but, like, Tristan tries, like, online dating um, in the next part of season 14. So, like, you know, he's going to, I think that's really important, too, that, like, he tries something new 
online dating might not be the answer for him, but at least he like tried something and he wasn't just moping around upset that him and Miles were over. But I don't think that it's something that we have to rule out forever. It's something that can happen again. Awesome. I All have right. one more great question. On oh. Line. Do you guys think that Marco and Tristan would have been friends? Oh. Yeah, I don't see yeah. why they wouldn't be friends. I absolutely think we would yeah. have been. I mean, I if, we're grade, if we're in the same grade, if we're in the same grade, yeah, in the same grade, like Mark Lynch just would have for sure dated it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what would that be? What would be? What was that? I'm really bad at mixing the names. Darko. Oh. Oh. Dark. Wait, Darko. No. Oh. I, mean, yeah. <laughs> I told Darko. you. I practiced it with. I'm really bad at mixing the names. Marston. No, Marston. Tristan and Marco. I think. Marston. Marston. That's hot. Marston. Oh, Marston. 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 Yeah. James Marston. Marston just sounds so like Marston. Like, Marston. 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 Marston sounds like oh, like your like grandpa. Marston. It's ugly, isn't it? Yeah. Like Marston. Marston. Okay. <laughs> we'll work on the name, <laughs> and we'll get back to you. Sure. I think they would have gotten along. I think so too. Yes. Um, thank you guys so much for joining us. We had a great time chatting with you guys. And, yeah, I mean, well, I know everybody keeps asking about 14B and when that's coming back. Um, coming very soon. Um, and just, it'll be worth the wait. That's all we can say. Some really cool stuff happens. Um, all right, awesome. Thanks everybody for Yeah, you for guys watching. are all really cool and, like, on point. Thanks. Yeah, and thanks for taking the time to, you know, sit here with us for because I know you're all in different, like, time zone, so you guys rock. Thanks for being great fans. Yeah.